Hello, I'm Sean. Sean's Outdoor Adventures. I'm here with my kids. They're kind of nervous. Kenna and Riley. Today we're making a crawfish trap. We already did last night. I did night. made this one last night. And it's three feet tall by a foot in diameter. It's got like a nice six inch opening on it. Hope it'll do good for me this year. It's like a dog's so I'm going to take you through the process of how I made this and you guys can make any modifications that you want. I made this out of quarter inch uh, fabric mesh and I can use this for minnows or crawdads or whatever I choose to do so with it. So here's what we do. So what we need to do here first is for this one foot diameter trap it needs to be about 37 inches long to make a one foot diameter trap. And I've got a few inches of overlap on it. So we mark it at 40 inches. And then we just cut out the square. That's because I'm a big boy. <laughs> Oh, and you need bigger scissors, so um, they can cut it better. And he also needs stronger scissors that, so he doesn't break other ones in half. Like funny. someone did in kindergarten. It was not me. Are you sure it wasn't you? Yes, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it was. It wasn't me, Dad. Or like a. Or, had to be in first or kindergarten. I can't remember. So now that we have that cut off, I'll roll this back up and get it out of the way here. When I cut this, I made sure to leave these little wires sticking out. That's part of how I'm tying it together. Yeah. And I need to do that to this other side here. Ow. Oh no. Yeah. I need to cut off this edge too so I can have the little wires poking out as well. So rather than marking up my carpet here, I put a piece of cardboard underneath of it. So we don't get unwet through the I need to measure out my 31 inches here again, so I know where to, where how, my, how far my overlap is. Yeah. This part here, I think, is about the worst part of the whole ordeal. Yeah, Getting this folded up or rolled up. And into my little holes here right along that line. Mm -hmm. that's and that's why I've got my two little helpers here. They're going to help me hold this down so I can get this folded up. Hold that like that. Right like that. Oh, Dad is coming apart again. Oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That'll happen. It happens a lot to people that have it to you last night. Oh, yep. oh it's a lot of Oh, you can go ahead and get poked. I'm All I'm doing here is folding the, my little wires over that I left on the squares so that they'll help hold everything together. I got scraped last night. So see, now that's holding itself together. And I'll finish rolling them up so that they're nice and tight here in a little bit. But if we don't hold them up, me and Wiley are just going to have to hold it.
So I've got it part way started here. I can take, got little pliers here. And these. I can take my wires and finish rolling them over. Is that worth it? No. I got it. <laughs> like I said, this is probably the most tedious part of this whole ordeal is getting these wires folded over. So I don't know if you can see this very well, but I've got them all folded over pretty nice, and it holds it together pretty tight. And you'll fit. So that's why I've left these little tags. Like I said, it's a little tedious, but it holds really well. And if you try taking apart, it won't get apart. And that's over there. Well, about 15 minutes later and I finally got that first row all folded over. Like I said, it's kind of time consuming. So then I just push this down and push my wires through onto the inside and fold them over again. So now after that's done, I still like a little bit more reinforcement. So I've got some 20 gauge steel wire and I'm just going to go about every four inches or so and tie off on one side. Just to make sure that it's going to hold really good. So what I do with my wire here. I just fold it over and make a little point on it and then I can just shove it down through one of the squares and catch it at an angle. Then I fold it over and twist it. And then cut it off. Okay, my tube is done. Set that off to the side. Now last night when I made the my first one, my wire mesh that I used was 4 foot wide by 11 feet long. And to make a 3 foot trap I had to cut off a 1 foot strip off the whole thing. Now this 1 foot strip that I used or have is, it is where I get my cones from. I've got this template made. It's 12 and a half inches long from center to the end and you just make a radius all the way around. I used a piece of string marked off 12 and a half inches and made a circle. Now this inside circle isn't really important to me at this point in time. I trim everything up after I get the cone made so that I have a one inch diameter opening. South Dakota game fish and park laws state that your traps can be no bigger than three feet long, one foot wide, with a one inch opening. So that's what I have to go with. Some people in Minnesota or other states, their openings can be as big as two feet, or excuse me, two inches. And they can have pretty much as big a traps as they want from what I've heard. But I have to follow the guidelines, so this is how I have to make mine. So with my template, I just mark out the radius. That's what we're living in now. Radius. Of both the outside and the inside. Then it trims it. And then I'll cut two of these out. 
Okay, so I've got my cone made, or my cone pattern cut out. To make it a little bit easier, I roll it up into a nice tight cone shape. And then that way, it's almost already shaped for you. So it holds a lot easier than trying to take one that's unrolled and trying to get it all shaped up. So now what we do, yes, you can bring the camera over. Okay. So now he got this one made. All he needs to do is the other one. Bring it in closer. So now what we do here is I only overlap about an inch at the most because of the material that I'm working with how wide it was and stuff I wasn't able to get as big of a cone that I wanted so I only overlap just a little bit but it's still enough to get it tied together stop Kenna you don't need to be showcasing the tools. Yeah. And I make sure to tie it on the outside so that you don't have to worry about any little wires poking in when you're reaching in here to clean the trap out or anything like that. this quarter inch mesh I'm only overlapping it a half an inch. I'll go ahead and do that down the whole seam here about every inch or so getting it all tied up. Now something I should mention here before we put the cone in is my opening on this is not even close to an inch. I said we've got to got to cut that open some more. So now that I've got my cone made, I'm going to go ahead and trim it open a little bit more so that I've got my inch regulated opening. So there's my inch opening. Okay, so that's how I make the opening here for it. And then I don't worry about cutting any of these wires off. That'll just help deter crawdads or minnows from swimming back out through the hole. Okay, getting ready to put the cone in. I should point out that with my pattern that I had here, and I only had one foot of material here to work with I ended up with a flat spot a spot that didn't have any radius on it so what I'm gonna do here this is the cone that I've made there's my flat spot you can see that it's flat not rounded I'm gonna put that flat spot up here where this doubled layer is and it sits in there nice and neat so that'll help keep everything lined up and then I have my split here in the cone right on the bottom side. And the reason for wanting to have this cone bigger is so that you can get this tied up and then fold the edges over and it makes it nice and stiff. So like before I make myself a little loop and then I just start tying it all together. And of course, the ties are going to have to be on the inside, or they could be on the outside, depending on how you want to do it. It's not really important. This one here ended up on the inside, but I'm going to change to the outside here. 
But the nice thing with how I do it, bending it over, you got to point the camera, look at the screen. Oh, okay. The nice thing with how I do it, bending it over like that, allows me to thread everything just like I'm trying to thread a needle. I can just stick it in and pull it out. And it's wrapped and cut just like that. So I'll get this all finished up here and we'll show you what the end, end result looks like. Okay, now that I've got it all tied, it's time to bend the tops over. If you want, you can go ahead and take your side cutters and cut down the edge of it to make it easier. But I prefer just to leave it all in one piece and just fold it over. And then I'll take my pliers and I'll tighten it down tight. And what this does, it gives that extra layer of this mesh around the outside edge. And like I said, it just makes this ring that much tougher. You can bang it around, throw it around then, and, won't and it won't deform very much. And it won't break, right? Yep, it won't break, Riley. You've got to hold it like that. Oh, okay. My camera girl isn't doing a good job this morning. <laughs> so I've got it all rolled over. Now it tightens it up. I just go through and pinch everything down nice and tight with my pliers. It helps push those sharp ends back into the fabric and then you can pick it up and grab it anywhere and there's no sharp points poking you. Poking you. That's all done. So now we got this nice stiff opening that can be thrown around and dropped and it will not bend very much. Or it won't break very much. So I want myself a six inch opening here. So I measure out and I want it right in the middle. 36 inch trap, so that's 18 inches here. So then I go 3 inches on each side. I'm just drawing an outline here on where I want to cut. So all you're doing is drawing on the square, right? Yep, I got my outline got mark. The square. Yes, now we're gonna cut it. So then I take my side cutters and cut it. And I just start cutting the ends off. So there I've got my opening cut. And how I've got it cut, there are some sharp points here. So you're going to have to be careful. I'm planning on wrapping that up with some sort of tape. So that when you reach in there, you're not scraping yourself all up. So out of my leftover roll, I'm cutting out the size of my trap for my last trap that I planned out. So I can have this little bit extra that's on the end here. My kids are wondering, what am I doing here? Are we making the third trap on video now? They're just going to have to wait. Let's see. Okay, I've got this cut out here. So now what I can do here, and I've got some nice clean edges cut on this one here. So I can 
go ahead and mark out my doors for this new track. Now the holes that I cut were six inches, so I'm going to make these doors seven inches or a little bit bigger. I'm making a door to cover my holes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the one, one um, big ones. The one big one. Right in the middle. Like that? So, like yep. the big old fall out? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna have to peel one. Yep. Just cutting one for right now. Oh, so good. Now we'll do it on the one that we made. So that is So there I've got my door cut out. So now this door I'm just going to wire in a hinge up here on top. And I gotta form this up a little bit so it's kind of got a little bit of a round shape so it follows the trap a little better and then I can wire it down here on the bottom side to keep it closed keep everything in there so we'll get this tied up here and we'll we'll show you the end product so there I've got my door attached so it comes up pretty nice <laughs> away. I've seen other other products where they had bungee cords to hold the bottom on. I might end up eventually doing that. I think that'd be a little bit better, a little easier to get into and stuff. But for right now, here I'm just going to use this use the wire and leave yourself plenty of wire. So that he can get it pulled down and tied up. And there's there's the trap. So I've got this rope here. Cut off the end of it. Fray it up or heat it up with a lighter or something so that it doesn't fray out on you. And we'll get this tied up here. Knots or not. A big issue there, you can use any knot that you want, I'm just doing a half hitch. And if you notice, I'm tying that rope right on that double ribbing there that I have. That's the strongest part of this trap here, I believe. And there you have it. One homemade crawfish slash minnow trap. Three foot long, a one foot in diameter, with one inch openings in the cone. Again, that was uh, 
game fishing park state regulation for the maximum size that I can make these traps so I went with the maximum size and this is what I ended up with total cost on the materials for this trap was about 10 bucks store-bought minnow trap from Walmart cost almost nine dollars and it's less than half the size of the trap that I just made so there's my trap making video for you hope you enjoyed it if you got any feedback go ahead and leave a comment I'll take any advice that you guys want to give me. Until then, thank you for watching Sean's Outdoor Adventures.